Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we're going to be building the most extreme electric skateboard that we've ever built. This demon has a top speed of up to 38 miles per hour and up to 30 miles of range, meaning it is unparalleled by any other competition. In this video, we'll be going over exactly every part that we used and every step-by-step -step process along the way, teaching you guys how to build one yourself. We'll also be selling this board on our website under the pre-built board section labeled as the demon. So without further ado, let's get into the video so we can teach you guys how we built this monster. These are the own board trucks. They're identical in dimension to the Evolve trucks. They just have a slightly different shaped hanger, which doesn't matter at all. They're a really great option because they come in with these built-in motor mount holders, which plug right into these own board motor mounts. These own board motor mounts are a solid option made from really high quality aluminum. They have two positions which you can adjust the mount, which we'll get to in a little bit, and they fit 63-74 motors onto these trucks or any 63 millimeter wide motor. Another really great feature about these motor mounts is that they have the ability to fit these belt covers on. It's a really neat feature because not many motor mounts come with belt covers that are already compatible, and that they're really nice because they're made from aluminum. We're going to be using two of Flipsky's 6374 190kV motors. Each motor is capable of outputting 3150 watts for a combined total of 6300 watts of power. These motors come with 4mm bullet connectors and a sensor wire. The first thing to do is to attach the motor to the motor mount by using the 4M4 bolts. We then tried to mount the belt cover onto the motor mount, however, we realized that the shaft of the motor was far too long for it to screw on properly. We will cover how we fix this later in the video. As we mentioned before, the motor mount has two positions in which you can mount it to the truck. This is a particularly useful feature because we found a lot of times that Evolve mounts and Evolve trucks can't be used on a lot of decks because the motors will hit the back of the deck. So the next step we did was to mount the motor mount onto the trucks by using the three screws that came along with it and then attaching the bolt on the opposite side. This part is a little bit tricky because there's not a lot of space to put the wrench or the allen key. After having fully mounted one mount to one side of the truck, then proceed to mount the other mount to the other side. We then undid the kingpin of the truck, that way we could slide the hanger off of the base plate of the truck. We are going to be using the Santa Cruz Rasta Lion deck from Santa Cruz Longboards. This skateboard is a really cool deck, the concave is actually incredible on this and it surpassed my farthest expectations. The grip tape pattern is also very cool and there's a really cool pattern on the back of the deck which we unfortunately won't see with the enclosure. So the reason we undid the hanger was because we had to screw the base plate through because it's a drop through deck. After that, you can mount the hanger back onto the truck. Considering that double kingpin trucks are prone to speed wobbles, we highly recommend tightening these trucks a lot. We are going to be using these 15 tooth HTD5 motor pulleys that we got from Flipsky. They're made from metal, so they have a very good quality, and they also include a keyway, which is really nice. You can then slide the keyway into the shaft of the motor so that it fits in the little groove. This part is a little tricky because the keyway is oftentimes tight in the shaft of the motor. You can then slide the motor pulley over the shaft in the keyway. This part is a little bit tricky because it's often a very tight fit and requires some hammering or hard hitting. We're going to be using the massive ABEC 107 wheels which we purchased from Evolve. These wheels are incredibly huge with a large contact patch and very soft urethane. They're probably one of the best electric skateboard wheels that you can buy. To match the ABEC wheels, we're going to be using these 38 tooth ABEC wheel pulleys from Evolve Skateboards. They snap right into the wheels because they have matching cores. We are using a 275mm, 15mm wide HTD5 belt from Polybelt. 
First slide the belt over the axle and then slide the wheel onto the axle. Then rotate the wheel until the belt aligns between the two pulleys. Repeat the process on the other side so that you have two functioning drivetrains. Also make sure to consider the tension of the belt. Moving into the electronics, we're going to be using this dual 6.6 .6 vest from Flipsky. This has proved to be a very solid and affordable option for any electric skateboard builders looking to use two motors. The remote that we are going to use is the Flipsky VX2 Pro Remote. This remote has a few upgrades from the VX2 original remote. These include a color display screen and also a much better throttle. The battery we are using is a 12S4P-Samsung 30Q battery, which we've had custom made for this build. This 12S 532Wh battery will propel riders to high speeds and allow for long rides. It also includes a percentage indicator, a charge port, and a power switch, along with an XT90 connector. We are going to be using this enclosure from West Coast Standard. If you haven't heard of them, they're a new company that specializes in making enclosures and they'll soon be making their own pre-built board. Go check them out if you're interested, they have a lot of cool products right now that they're currently selling and really great enclosure options. The first thing that we did was to lay out all of the electronics inside of the enclosure to get a good idea of how everything would fit together. Because this enclosure is far longer than we needed it to be, everything turned out to fit very well. Next we plug the XT90 connector from the battery into the XT90 of the VESC. We then connected the receiver from the VX2 remote into the UART port on the VESC. You'll have to cut it open with a knife because it's sealed, but once you do that you'll have access to the port where you can plug in the JST connectors. To make sure that everything was working properly, we powered on the battery and checked that the lights on the VESC turned on. We then applied this rubber gasket around the edge of the enclosure to prevent any water from getting in. It also prevents the deck from rattling with the enclosure as there's a soft, nice cushion between the two. You can usually find these in the window aisle of your local hardware store. The next step that we took was to drill a hole in the side of the enclosure for the power switch. The next hole that we drilled was for the charger port. We then cut off the charge port and the power switch and attached 3mm bullet connectors to them, that way they'd thread through the holes. We then put the charge port and the power switch through their respective holes, so they'd sit nice and flush with the edge of the enclosure. As we mentioned earlier, the belt cover was not fitting on, so what we decided to do was finally buy a Dremel and then saw off the edge of the shaft of the motor. It was then time to cut the hole out for the percentage indicator, but this time, thankfully, we had a Dremel. This sped up the process quite a bit, and thank you for everyone for telling us to finally get one. The percentage indicator hole was much more clean. We then drilled holes in the rear of the enclosure for the phase wires to pass through. We made these holes the diameter of these electric conduit fittings that we got at Home Depot. The conduit fittings will prevent any water from getting into the enclosure while riding in damp conditions. To mount the battery inside of the enclosure, we used this double-sided sticky adhesive. For the VESC, we used two pieces of Velcro. We also applied a small strip of Velcro to the receiver, that way it would stay in place. Our next step was to connect the phase wires together and then apply this braided cable sleeve around them to make it look neat. This process was very lengthy, tedious, and honestly it felt like a complete waste of time, but in the end, it actually made the final product look quite a bit nicer and professional. To keep the cables in place, we use one inch thick heat shrink. As you can see, the result was actually very impressive. We then actually physically placed the battery onto the double-sided adhesive and plugged the battery as well as all of the other internal components together one last time. With everything connected, we programmed the VESC in censored FOC mode using VESC Tool 1.29. At this point, we made our initial test by turning on the battery and then turning on the remote. When we pushed the throttle, everything worked. Even after cutting down the shaft of the motor, the belt cover still did not want to fit. So what we decided to do was to space out the belt cover using two washers.
All of the internal electronics were then glued together to ensure that nothing would come undone. The final step was to mount the enclosure to the deck, and to do this we did something other than our traditional method. We used this threaded nut insert that we put inside the top of the deck. A skinny hole is drilled through both the deck and the enclosure, and then a thicker hole just through the deck. This way, the nut insert is put just inside of the deck and not through the enclosure. The screw is then put in the opposite side of the deck, making it look very clean and nice. We repeated this process five more times, placing one of these in each corner of the enclosure and then at the midpoint. Once all six bolts were screwed in, we were done, and this is what the finished project looked like. The charger this board will be using is a 3 amp 12S charger that comes with the battery. This premium charger will charge the battery much faster as it's 3 amps as opposed to the standard 2 or 1.5. Simply plug in the charger to the wall outlet, a green light will then turn on on the charger, and then plug in the opposite end to the battery, and the red light will turn on until the battery is fully charged. It will then go green. So there you guys have it, that's how we built the demon. The remainder of this video is just going to be a compilation of us testing and writing this board, so we hope you enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like we mentioned before, under the products tab on our website propulsion boards, you can go to the pre-built section and find the demon. Here we will be selling this board completely pre-built that will ship to you ready to ride. Once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.